Hello and welcome to not only the very first video of the channel, but the very first video of the series. We're going to be playing through the dungeon of Nahilbuk, as you can see there in the background. We're going to be doing a full playthrough, the difficulty and all of that we're going to go through in a minute. I hope you enjoy and I'll definitely be posting these at least once, maybe twice a week. All right, let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna pick up a new game. Uh, it looks like we have to create a profile. All right. Okay, now it looks like we have uh, four different difficulty modes. Uh, we got Gripping Tail, Tavern Song, Epic Jest, and Xor's Nightmare. Um, so let's go ahead and go through these and just see what the differences are. So we have Gripping Tail. A uh, Gripping Tail where the story is prioritized over challenge. Best for players who want to experience the story. Battles are more manageable to those with no experience of tactical RPGs. Heroes have more health, do more damage, and are more accurate. Enemies have slightly less health and are less accurate. Heroes begin the adventure with a generous stack of resources, gold, potions, bandages. The economy is more lax, the group earns more gold, and essentials are cheaper. And weakened heroes are less handicapped. Oh, okay, I think these options can be configured for any uh, any difficulty. We basically have Iron Man. Ooh. That's tough. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, we can assign attributes automatically, which we will not do. Uh, we will play through the tutorial. And it looks like we can actually choose who we want uh, as a narrator. It can be male or female. Uh, let's take a look at the other difficulties. So we've got Tavern Song. A tavern song narrating the perilous peregrinations of an adventuring party not quite like the others. The basic difficulty upon which the others are built. For those who enjoy tactical RPGs for their first playthrough, or for beginners looking for a tactical challenge. Um, so here we actually can uh, play Iron Man. All right, let's take a look at the next difficulty. An epic jest. Let me know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Where danger is abound, every step forward will be a victory for the tactical RPG aficionados looking for a real challenge or who have already finished the game. Enemies have more health, do more damage, and are slightly more accurate. Heroes have less resources at the beginning of the game, gold, potions, bandages, and some additional enemies can be encountered in combat. So we actually might have more enemies. And the final difficulty, Xor's Nightmare. A nightmarish legendary experience only for the tactical RPG experts who know the game inside and out and want to achieve the unthinkable. Recommended for the deranged, the masochists, players who are looking for an outstanding challenge where any mistake can be fatal. Enemies have a lot more health, uh, do a lot more damage and are incredibly accurate. Heroes are less accurate and have slightly less energy. Heroes begin the game with very little resources. The party earns slightly less gold and you'll encounter many additional enemies in battle. So here's what I'm thinking. Now kind of going through these difficulties. Uh, now, of course, I haven't played this game before. Uh, so this is gonna be a very first playthrough. Um, so I'm thinking going with this difficulty, uh, but then taking the Iron Man which means we only have one save and we cannot change difficulty levels once the game has begun. So we're basically essentially locked into this difficulty, but we will lose our save if the entire party dies. So I feel like this will give me a higher challenge while not going for the complete and ridiculous difficulty, which is Xor's Nightmare. So I think I'm going to go with that. Uh, do let me know in the comments if you have any other suggestions or any other ways of playing through this. Again, I have never played it before, so I'm kind of just throwing my hand at it. Uh, let's see. So the narrator gender. Um, I don't really care which one. Looks like male is default, so we'll go with that one. All right, here we go. 
Uh, yes. I'm happy with that. Let's go. That is an adorable loading screen. Yeah. I like it. First chapter, a feeling of deja vu. The party advances. A steely-eyed ranger, a brutal barbarian, a ruthless ogre, a wizardess with fiery hair, an agile elf, a wily thief, a dwarf, well, you know, just a dwarf. Together, they have just crossed into the terrible dungeon of Nahelbuk. This dungeon's nothing to write home about. Don't know what we'll find inside here, but it stinks. That's easy. The ogre just took a dump five feet from the door. <laughs> I've got a strange feeling of deja vu. Because of the ogre shit? Have you been here before? I feel like I'd know if I had. Probably not. No one's ever got in here before. By the way, what is our quest? We must find the 12th statuette of Gladalfura. A statuette? It's written in the Tablets of Skellis that only a one-legged gnome from the northern forest, dancing by the moonlight in the middle of 12 statuettes wrapped in hand. <laughs> <clears throat> As I was saying, only a one-legged gnome shall open the gates of Zaralbak and thus accomplish the prophecy. But what is this strange prophecy? No idea. We're only in it for the gold. That's why we came here. Yeah, and I knocked before coming in. And I called you a half-wit. Okay, ah. let's all get along, okay? Let's focus on the statuette. Do we have any idea where it's located? Like every statuette, it's in the treasure room, guarded by a powerful warlock. Battle! Hmm, maybe his powers are even greater than mine. Sounds a bit right. What kind of monsters live here? So, if you look at the random encounter table, these are the monsters in this dungeon. Several kinds of undead, giant spiders, orcs, and goblins. <laughs> goblins! Underground trolls, warlocks, cursed knights, mutant rats, a bottle of oil, some toilet paper, two sponges, and ravioli. I think you're also reading your shopping list. So no dragons, right? Nah, well above our level, Cap. Anyway, let us go forth. Okay. Um... Well, that is a uh, <laughs> that is a hell of an intro. Ham, I got that bit. Uh, very typical party, it seems. We've got the dwarf, the barbarian, the ogre, the wizardess, the thief, the elf, and I believe this is the ranger. And that's how we kind of get dumped into it. And it looks like we have a bit of um, how to put this. A fourth wall, I would say. <laughs> I feel like we've got a bit of a fourth wall going as well. All right. Uh, moving the party around is easy. Just click anywhere on the ground with left click. You can also hold left click down to lead the party. You can swap the leader by clicking on any character of your choosing. Oh, so if we want to have the, the dwarf as the leader, then we can. All right, so how do we move? Can we move with the WASD keys? Yes, we can. Uh, you can zoom in, zoom out with... Oh, perfect. If we want to take a good look at our party, then we can. And we can also rotate if we want, which I think is very cool. That you can have actually Crow full control. Crow has already been through here. He saluted all the dungeons. All right, Barbarian. Take it easy. Right, so let's go forward. Halt! You arrived at a junction and must face three choices. Hmm, all those doors are closed and blocked with a strange glowing seal. Weird. And I'm having another deja vu. Oh, shiny, pretty. Probably some kind of magic lock we have to dispel. No way we're getting f***ed over by some goddamn door. My cousin Crimley always says, if it's magic, hit it harder. No, wait. Okay. You f***ing mor- Where are they? Shit! Hey! Dwarf! Elf! Dang 
hit. Did everybody get lost but me? What was that noise? Good. Now that you know the basics, go forth into the dungeon of Nahelbuk, I think. I also noticed, let me just pause it here for a second, that the overlay is actually just covering the chat. So I'm just going to move it a little bit up and we should be good to go now. All right. Okay, so let's see. Um, looks like our main mission is to find the members of your party. Oh, damn it, an orc. And I'm alone, of course, I'm alone. This is the perfect opportunity to discuss the matter of combat, a crucial subject when adventuring in mysterious dungeons. Open door, gotta go. Me eat bad, go tripe. No, I I'm not done. Go away, you meanie. Oh, sounds like an elf. Anyway, be cool. He's alone. This shouldn't be a problem. Oh, and we're in combat. Okay. Um, every character has two action points. They can perform an action and move once per turn. They can also move further by using both action points, sacrificing their action. This is sprinting. Order is not a problem. This means you can move with an attack or the opposite. Be careful lest some actions will end your turn, even if your character still has two action points. Gotcha. Okay. Let's confirm that. Right, so it looks like we do have uh, our movement options. Uh, this orc looks rather distracted. Move the ranger on one of the three tiles behind him. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and do as instructed. Uh, as you can see with this orc, the orientation of the characters is important. Backstabbing gives higher precision and will do more damage. So precision, maybe that's critical. Uh, orient yourself towards the orc to backstab him. Well. I can see that when we move, we can actually pick our orientation, which I think is what it's talking about there. So we're going to go ahead and make make sure that we're right behind him. Time to attack. Select the melee attack in the action bar. So it looks like our orc has 27 hit points. We can see... Can I click on him? I was trying to kind of mouse over the hurried orc there, definition. Uh, so it seems like he's level 1. He has no protection, no dodge. He has 17% physical res, 9% magical res. It looks like he does have an opportunity attack. And he currently has a debuff of minus one movement. And I believe the 2T is probably two turns, but I'm not sure. All right, so uh, it looks like we can do 14 to 18 damage. Uh, deals damage to an adjacent enemy. This attack has a small precision bonus. Go ahead and melee attack. Uh, here you'll find an overview of the afflictions and status effects which can affect characters and their durations. All right, so that was basically what we were just reading. You can also check in this box their dodge value, their protection value, their level, and their threat level. Uh, an arrow down means the orc is suffering from a penalty to his characteristics for two turns. Yes, and you can see that he has minus one movement. I can also see that our base precision is of 86, but because we are behind him, we get a 10% bonus to a total of 96. So I'm assuming we are going to crit him. Uh, here are the details of your precision. This is very important. As you can see, you have a positioning bonus because you're standing behind the enemy. However, if your attack succeeds, your enemy may still dodge or parry your blow. It's not just about having high precision. Gotcha. All right. Attack the orc and kick his ass. Oh, he's gonna... Okay. Uh, the orc is not feeling so good. Uh, use I or middle mouse button on him to access details. Okay, let's try that. Uh, the orc is weakened. This means he is less efficient now that he's all banged up. His precision, physical resistance, and magical resistance are worse. Okay. Uh, there are three weakness thresholds depending on the character's health. If a character's health bar changes color, excuse me, uh, this means they're weakened. Gotcha. 
This panel also allows you to see the detailed afflictions which affect the character. Here it's a penalty of minus one to movement for a duration of two turns. Yep, we went over that. Now kill the orc. All right. So I don't think we can move. I think moving, even if you're sort of within his circle, let's say, uh, I think we still get attack of opportunity based on the little arc that we see just uh, above his legs here. So I think we're just gonna smack him. So melee attack and smack him. Alrighty. Very nice. At the end of combat, all characters gain some experience. They, they gain a baseline share just for having participated to the combat and a varying amount depending on their actions or their luck. A character who goes unconscious during combat will suffer a small penalty to their experience gain. Gotcha. Um, all right, let's confirm. The ranger has lost some health points. Heal him by giving him a potion or with the party heal button. Uh, health does not regenerate between battles, so you'll have to make sure to heal your wounds after combat. Oh, that's crazy. Okay, so we do not heal out of combat. We literally have to utilize these potions. Well, I guess we'll go ahead and use one. Well, it tastes bad. Reminds me of my granny's soup. You know, I always wondered, what does the health potion taste like? Uh, this is, uh, yeah, he, he's, uh, I mean, they're gone. There were more than one? So many I couldn't even count them. But I killed one, which sent them all running. Are you all right? It was horrible. I found myself in these disgusting toilets. But where are the others? Uh, what's going on? It's because of that moronic dwarf. He must have triggered a magic trap. The whole party's been scattered around this floor. We need to find them. Um, how about we don't find the dwarf? <laughs> no, we'll need his act if there are other orcs. Don't you think you could handle them by yourself? Yeah, that's... Even the greatest heroes have their limits. Anyway, let's not hang around here. You know, he isn't wrong. We all have our limits. That is very true. Very, very true. Alrighty. Um... Sorry, just monitoring temperatures here. Sorry. Okay. Where were we? Um, doesn't seem we have anything here. One thing I'm noticing is that the movement with the keys seems to be... Something feels off. I'm not... I can't... See, right now I'm pressing the keys, but he's not moving. So I, I feel like the left click might be the intended way. So we're just going to go ahead and actually click whenever we want to move somewhere. Ah, here's the thief. Yippee! Plus, he's not the dwarf. Silence. You'll get us spotted. There are orcs in this room, and they've got bows and arrows. We need to devise a plan. Okay, I got a plan. You attack them while I stand guard, just in case somebody ambushes us. Mm -hmm. yeah, sounds like something a coward would say to avoid a fight. Absolutely not. It's very rational behavior. I've got a bow, too. I can shoot arrows. Yikes! Another good reason to take cover. <laughs> when you're behind an obstacle, you're less likely to get hit. Even by friendly fire. Well, I've got no choice if you want to move ahead. we got to get rid of those orcs. How many are there? I can only see one of them right now. But the others must be close. I got you. A group of one. I hate people who make a fuss over nothing. When fighting alone, charging head-on is fine. But when in a group, a battle must be planned. Careful positioning can save you from crushing defeats. All right. During the planning phase, you can deploy your characters before combat starts. You can position your characters in the highlighted area. Movement doesn't cost action points during the planning phase, so you can take as long as you want to strategize. Great. This is very interesting. So it looks like we, we have the time we need to position our party before we get into it. That is very, very interesting, actually. It means that we have full control over how we want to go about this. I like that a lot. I really do. All right. Uh, still, we'll hold your hand, as it is your first time. 
select the elf who is out of cover, okay? Uh, have her take cover on the highlighted tile to protect her. Full cover can protect you from range attacks. They give your opponent a 50% penalty to their precision. Awesome. Let's have her move there. Now select the ranger. Have him take cover two. Hiding behind half cover will not fully protect you from range attacks, but the attacker will suffer a 25% penalty to precision when attacking you. So we'll go ahead and place him here facing forward. And uh, I'll select the thief. Position him on one of the highlighted tiles so that he's protected from range attacks and can sneak up on the orc. Oh, okay, so he wants to do that over here. All right. I guess we'll have him face the orc. Here's how the order of action is determined. Initiative is ranked depending on the character's courage. If their courage is equivalent, the higher agility is prioritized than the level of the characters. If their levels are the same, then it's up to chance. Good old random. Uh, click on fight whenever you're ready. I think we're ready. Uh, this orc is now in overwatch, which means he's keeping an eye on the area and will attack any enemy that enters it. Since he has not moved before going to overwatch, he can make two overwatch shots. If he had moved, he would only be able to make one shot. Gotcha. Okay, that's good to know because I feel like we'll be able to utilize that to our advantage as well later on. The ranger could move forward, but he, this would get him shot by the orc in overwatch. Too dangerous. Time to talk about the ability to delay your turn. Oh, we can do that? If a character has not used any action points, they can delay their turn to play at the end of the round. They will ha they will act at their normal initiative the following turn. Gotcha, okay. So you can delay your turn, act at the end, and then you still get to act whenever your t round actually was initially. That's cool. Uh, it's a useful ability when you'd like to let another character, friend or foe, act before you do. Okay, gotcha, sorry. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and delay a turn. The thief is not the toughest or even the bravest of fighters, but he can dish out a lot of damage and interfere with your foes. Time to get rid of this orc's overwatch. Mouse over him to make his overwatch area appear on the ground. Oh. This is the overwatch area the enemy is watching. If one of your characters enters this area, they'll be targeted by an overwatch shot. A character who has entered overwatch mode without moving before, like this one, can shoot twice. If a character in overwatch takes damage or if an enemy moves right next to him, their overwatch will be cancelled. So we can interrupt his overwatch. Okay, I get it. So I guess we're going to try and get the thief on him, hit him, cancel the overwatch, and then we can play with the, uh, with the ranger and the elf. During movement, you can set some waypoints by holding left control and pressing the left mouse button. This will give you the ability to determine a specific path for your character instead of the suggested path. If the movement area becomes orange, this means you will sprint. Sprinting will allow you to move further, but will consume both your action points and end your turn. Move your thief close by setting waypoints on the highlighted tiles to cancel the orc's overwatch. Oh, perfect. Okay, so we don't actually have to mouse over. We can just press Alt, and it will show by default. All right, so now we don't want to do this action, because if we do this path, then we're going to take it. So we want to use Control, go there, there, and there, and then we'll face forward. Uh, the Elf is a former Pony Grooming Champion, braiding category. She's also the least bad character with a bow, and has some support skills that can be quite useful. The least bad character. Let's just keep that in mind. Uh, mouse over the highlighted tile. This will show the aiming arcs to the target the Elf can shoot. Oh, I see that. Uh, aiming arcs enable you to preview which targets you can reach by mousing over a tile. Excuse me. That was a random yawn. All right, I'm okay. Uh, usually archers cannot shoot if an enemy is at melee range, unless the latter is knocked over, stunned, or frozen. Gotcha. So. He can shoot a melee range, or she can shoot a melee range, provided that there is a status effect on the enemy. Okay. Right. 
Alright, so let's move forward. First, select a standard ranged attack, then mouse over the orc to ready your shot. Your range is highlighted in red on the ground. The enemies within range are also highlighted in red. The range of the range of ranged attacks varies depending on your weapon and some skills. Since the orc is outside your maximum range, you'll suffer a 10% penalty to your precision against him. Now let's go find that out. So range attack deals damage to an enemy at range, 14 to 20, and yep, there it is. If a character, friend, or foe is adjacent to your target and in your line of sight, they'll be highlighted in orange, meaning there's a chance your shot hits them by accident. Now that's not good. The probability of this happening is equivalent to 10%. Why am I yawning? Oh, I am so sorry. Okay. Uh, the probability of this happening is equivalent to 10% of your precision. It is shown in red in your precision detail collateral damage. Gotcha. So it does say that there's a chance that the shot will hit them. So my understanding based on the stats there is that there's a 68% chance that the attack will hit the orc. Now the other 20, math, 32%, that took way longer, 32% uh, chance, is that going to be to hit the thief? Or is that going to, or there's also a chance it will be a miss? That's, that's a question I have right now. Uh, all right, now, attack the orc with your ranged attack. Easy. Well done, elf. Now that the orc's vigilance has been cancelled, you can safely move the ranger forward on the highlighted tile. Let's do that. Now we will attack him. Oh. Now let's talk about support. Interesting. Uh, this is a crucial mechanic. When an ally is oriented towards your target, like the thief here, they will provide you with their support. Usually, support will grant you a 5% bonus to your precision. I initially thought precision was crit, but I'm starting to think it's hit chance. And that's probably what it is. Yeah, it has to be. All right, anyway. Uh, you can stack multiple supports, but only with melee attacks. Got it. Characters with high charisma will gain a higher bonus to their precision for every supporting character. Here, the ranger has a 9% bonus to his precision instead of 5%, thanks to his charisma. Nice. Finally, as support does not require an action, a character can support an attack even if they have already taken their turn for this round. Keep that in mind when orienting your characters. We're done with support. Now you may attack the orc and benefit from the thief's support. Let's do it. <laughs> Very nice hit. Thank you, Thief. Oh, attack of opportunity. Nice. Take this, chicken shit. <laughs> okay. Uh, wrong move. The orc just took two opportunity attacks to face to the face when fleeing. Each character controls the three tiles in front of them. If an enemy leaves this area, they will be hit by an opportunity attack. This type of attack deals slightly less damage than a normal attack, but cannot be dodged or parried. It can still miss, however. Be mindful of opportunity attacks when planning your moves. We're about to get a shot. Oh lordy. Six damage. Alright. Uh, I think at this... Oh, and combat to move on. Okay. Um, so let's move here. Actually, wait. Okay. Ah, there we go. Okay, so if we go past this circle, then we're using... We're sprinting. Okay. So let's move here. Uh, let's face him. Let's smack him. Magic, not good. And that that is a win. All right, let's see. So we got four gold coins and a lame ass longbow. I guess you could use it as a fishing rod. That is just lovely. Now, I'm noticing something interesting there is that it has the ranger highlighted, but both the elf and the thief seem to be grayed out. Well, I would figure that the elf would be the one to use the longbow, so we'll have to compare that. Uh, take all. Uh, I don't think we need to spend a potion just to heal that little bit there, so we're going to go ahead and just back out, I guess. 
<laughs> we won! We did, thanks to my perfect planning. Let's keep going. The others can't be that far. And all the heroes got 560 experience. Now, is there a way to access inventory yet? Have some buttons here. Skill tree. One of these is probably the inventory, but maybe we just don't have access to it yet. Neither C, I, or B do anything, so. All right, Ranger. You're taking point. Oh, there's some loot here. Got there. Uh, we've got ham, six months old. Uh, a mass market ham, salted in brine and cured as quickly as possible. It's okay, at best. And it looks like it heals for eight, uh, two per turn, and it also gives physical res. Not bad. And we have withered broccoli. Broccoli is full of potassium and vitamin B. However, it is not edible for barbarians as it is not dripping <laughs> with animal fat. Right, because an, uh, barbarians only eat meat. Very important to keep that in mind. Uh, it also cures the poison status, so that's perfect. Uh, let's go ahead and take both. Uh, now I'm thinking maybe, oh, I can't access yet. I was actually going to feed the ranger the, um, the ham. Well, looks like there's no more loot, nothing of interesting here. So I say we go out the door. One second, I'm just opening my computer window. Yes, it has a window just to help vent heat. All right. Okay. Ooh. Ah, finally, there you are. Yeah, well, we had to fight off hordes of orcs to get here. Bloodthirsty and cunning orcs, mind you. And you wouldn't believe the stink in those toilets. Uh, you're losing me. He says he's stuck and can't open the gate. It looks like some kind of pantry, but it's empty. He says he only had a small bite. Mm. I see. There must be some kind of mechanism somewhere. Levers can be far from the mechanism they activate. Investigate the room for a lever to free the ogre. You can use tab. No. Yes, tab. Uh, to highlight any interactable objects in your surroundings. Oh, that's, that's good to know. That means we might also highlight loot. I'm noticing it might be a little too dark. Let me know if it's too dark or if you if you guys can still see me. I can flip the lights if needed. That'll be for the next video. Uh, right. So we've got loot. Uh, I believe we've got a door. All right, let's go grab the loot. 12 gold coins, perfect. Uh, a headless doll. You could use it as a prop in a goth party, I guess. Too ugly for anything else. Or a sausage guillotine. The perfect gift for your husband. Show, don't tell. We will take these, if nothing else, to get it away from here. Yes, we'll go with that. Is there any other loot in this room? Let's go check. I have to remember that we are playing an Iron Man, and so we must take all the necessary precautions. All right, let's go ahead and open the door, freeing our friends. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, I was trying to use the control still. There we go. I don't really enjoy dungeons. They smell like. Here we go, it's opening! Do the body, yippee! Aw, I'm happy too, buddy. <laughs> I'd have expected him to bend the bars. He was too anxious to be on his own. Ogres are very sensitive. All the cumbersome stuff the party finds usually ends up stashed in the ogre's bag, because he's the strongest. Since it's rather impractical to rummage through, 
we've come up with an interface for you. Thank you. I appreciate that. Having to go through his bag every single time probably would be a bit of a problem. Now, open the inventory to check out the contents of the ogre's bag. There we go. Look at that lovely UI. Mm. So, a little disclaimer. I don't know what it is, but when I play RPGs, if there's one thing I like is to literally just look at the character screen and just see all the different slots that you're going to be able to equip gear in. It's just like, I cannot wait to see how cool, <laughs> you know, they'll, they'll look. It's awesome. I, I like this. And it's also very visual. Um, I don't know. I, I really, really like this. I like it a lot. Uh, the ogre is the one who carries all your inventory on the right, but each character has their own equipment on the left. There's a weight limit to your inventory, so you can't just carry everything around with you. 350 seems to be our limit. Oh, look, the bow you found in your last combat. Mouse over it to check out its characteristics. Uh, you can read about the characteristics of a weapon in the highlighted area. All weapons share the same four stats, but some also have additional magical properties. So the four stats being damage, precision, which is hit chance, uh, critical chance, and critical damage. Okay. Uh, damage. The, the damage range of the weapon. Most skills are based on the equipped weapon damage. Precision, the accuracy bonus brought by the weapon, which will be added to a character's natural precision. Good to know. Critical chance, the probability of striking a critical hit with this weapon. And critical damage. This is your critical damage multiplier. Your damage will be multiplied by this number if you trigger a critical hit. Oh. Uh, each character can be equipped with a main weapon and a secondary weapon, with the exception of the ogre and the wizardess, who only have one weapon slot. The ranger can equip a bow as a secondary weapon. Equip the bow you just found. All right, perfect. Let's go ahead and equip our lame ass longbow, which it doesn't seem to show in the back of his character. I'll admit, I thought that would be looking pretty cool if we could actually see the longbow on his um, on his back. But you know, minor details. Uh, you can navigate between characters by clicking on their portraits. Look, the portrait of the ogre is red. This means he suffers from an injury. Well, let's go find out what that injury is. Also, the ogre, those cheeks though, has no gear. <laughs> uh, injuries are permanent attribute penalties. They can be healed with specific consumables, bandages, first aid kit, or by resting in a tavern. You will suffer the penalty associated with the injury as long as it's not healed. If a character falls in combat, again, while still wounded, the injury will get worse, raising the corresponding penalty. There are three wound thresholds. Okay, so if he falls, then he gets a second wound and up to three. All right. Uh, use a bandage from inventory to heal this nasty looking injury. To use a bandage, you can use the left mouse button like a regular object or click and drag the bandage. I like click and dragging because, you know, it does get the little items. So let's go ahead and do that. Get back to the game whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Let's go. Actually, let me take I a look at the loot. Snorfindel's lame ass bow. A short tunic. Okay, we're going to go through these. Uh, useless even as a butter slicer. There's barely enough fabric here for an ogre to use as a tissue but it hides the essential. I guess you could say that. And she has a, oh, it's a headband, a cute headband. This lovely headband is perfectly matched with the elf's hair. Probably won't help much when an iron golem shows up. You should try that out. I think it's okay, narrator, thank you. And a tattered cloth belt, an, an old, ugly, tattered belt. Better than nothing, maybe. Sorry, I'm just taking a look at the, at the models. Let's see. Uh, Crap, what a mess. So they all have the same belt. Oh, wait, does she have boots too? Put their hands in my pockets? Oh, come on, elf, please. Uh, chicken keeper's boots. Quite all right if you need to guard some chicken in a muddy village. We'll do the job when leaving it all behind. Brandishing your club and riding your nag to, to adventure. Uh, dump, dump hill rural bastard sword. 90% rust. 10% steel, 100% bad. That is a crappy sword. 
And it looks like we have Norm. Let's take a look at our... Yum, yum. Oh, look at that. He has ham in his pockets. And he has a minor health potion. Easy dungeon. Nice. Uh, Rather's rudimentary potion that cures small wounds, paper cuts, and ingrown nails. A staple of dungeoning. Lovely. Um, disgusting loincloth. You should be glad he's wearing something. You know what, narrator? I am. Ogre fists. The ogre is such a robust fellow, he doesn't need weapons to crush people. Breaks destructible objects in one hit. Now that is good to know. Don't mix the potions or... Boom. Also, you might notice that I look there. That's because that's where I have the overlay and where I sort of take a look at things. Although, I should be looking there because I'm talking to you guys. Just, you know, gotta note that. Uh, Alright, we have our wizard desk. Uh, a worm-eaten apprentice stick. Break a twisty twig with your scrawny arms and voila. You've got yourself a worm-eaten apprentice stick. Tattered wizard robes, beginner robes. They bear the marks of frustrating hours of practice, soror sorority parties. Yes. Uh, fungal growth and other aspects of low-level magic use. Yuck. And a hat of cognitive reinforcement. With this hat, you'll be able to cast spells, but also read, count your twos, and tie your pointy shoes. Although using it cor correctly requires some amount of intelligence. Yeah, you don't want to have this upside down. The poor get poorer. Because you steal their money, right, thief? Got it. Um, uh, let's see. A tattered hood. Uh, don't expect this type of headgear to garner your you much trust and sympathy. Most people are wary of hooded individuals, unsurprisingly. It will keep your head warm, at least. Novice Thief Tunic. This easy dungeon tunic <laughs> is a good compromise between discretion and light protection. Perfect for a beginner rascal. Ironically, this one was stolen. I wonder why, Thief. I wonder why. Uh, Lamas Daggers of the Wanderer. Best keep them well hidden to keep you from embarrassment. Because they look like ass. Alrighty. Um, I think that's it. Let's go ahead and go back. Well, I found some writing materials in his bag. I should be able to map the dungeon now. The wizardess keeps the map updated. It's usually best to act as if you know where you're going. Although I'm pretty used to most players f***ing around by clicking haphazardly. I feel attacked, narrator. All right. I mean, yes, I do like clicking around, so is that a problem now? Uh, the wizardess is in charge of the dungeon map and the quest journal. All right, let's go take a look at that. Oh, let's update the map. Let's. Uh, I, I don't know what it is, guys, but I really love the, the UI. It's just, it's so pretty. It's simplistic, yet pretty. I don't know. It just, it just gets me. Uh, the quest journal is on the left. Here you can not only find the objectives to your main quest, but also to your secondary quests. The map is on the right. You can use it to get your bearings around the dungeon, and it will be updated throughout your progress. Uh, so yeah, we're on the quest, the dungeon of Nahul Buk. Well, that's a nice way to begin an adventure. Shit hit the pan when the dwarf smashed his axe against this strange magic, and now everyone's gone. We have to regroup. All right, so we've got archives, side quests, main quests. All right, that's all pretty straightforward. I hear something. Someone's coming. Go check it out. Why should it be me? Rangers are usually the scouts. Coward! Yes, sir. It's a perfectly honorable life choice. <laughs> oh, crap. We got time enemies. Time lunch, guys. Come on. Grab time. Intruders. Let's eat them, too. Maybe I could go back to the inn to ask for help. Shut up. We got no use for wimps. You have to fight like everybody else. <laughs> I like how... That was my dog, by the way. Um, I like how... He seems to be all... How to say... Courageous. You know, come on, don't be a coward. Let's go. While he was pretty scared of even fighting one ogre not that long ago. Orc, sorry. Our ogre is our guy. Now that you've gathered some of your party, your characters have unlocked their first skills, which will prove useful to defeat these orcs. Begin combat by pressing fight. Alright, here we go. Let's try and figure out what we're dealing with here. Alright. 
Okay, uh, the ranger is a jack of all trades. Range attacks, supports, heals. He has a lot of options. Select one of his tactical skills to learn more. Oh wait, I was wrong, look. The bow is on his back. Success. All right, let's take a look at his skills then. Uh, tactic charge. Raises precision of all allies until the end of combat. Only one tactic may be active at the same time. Okay, that, that's a pretty decent one. Five precision for everybody. It does look like it costs energy. I'm assuming that's what the little running uh, guy icon is. It also has two. Does that mean two action points? Because it says all of the combat, right? Uh, raises parry and dodge chance of all allies until the end of combat. And that's a defensive maneuver. Uh, I think we're going to activate defensive maneuver. I like playing defensively, so let's go ahead and activate that. Uh, here you'll find useful information about your skills. Every skill costs stamina. Oh, stamina, okay. And has a cooldown. Oh, cooldown. Okay, got it. Uh, you'll gain back some stamina at the beginning of every turn. You can check the regen value by moving the cursor over the stamina bar. I want to do that, but I can't. The ranger at level 1 can use tactics. These skills can influence all your allies no matter where they are on the map. Once activated, a tactic will stay active until the end of combat or until the ranger dies. Only one active can be active. Only, only one tactic can be active at any time. <laughs> if you choose to use another, it will cancel the effects of the first one. Right. Yep, that makes sense. Uh, tactic Charge is an offensive buff, while Tactic Defensive Maneuver is a defensive one. Select and use a tactic that you wish to have during this battle. Yes. Perfect. Uh, so let's go ahead and use that. Hold your ground! Stop shaking your legs, thief! <laughs> it's fine. You're fine. Okay, uh, now move your ranger on the highlighted tile. We're about to learn how to, how to combine your character's strengths. Perfect, all right, let's do that. The ogre is your most brutal character. However, he is not that accurate. That's why he, would use some he could use some support from your other characters. Oh, and he doesn't really like wearing armor. Yeah, I, I understand that. The ogre has the Kadula Opog skill. In ogreish, this means please mind my personal space. Okay, uh, get closer to the orc in order to use it. The ogre hits his target with his paunch, dealing damage and pushing them back two tiles. That's a lot of damage too. Right, let's move towards him. Uh, since the ranger is oriented towards your target, the orc will also be targeted by an, uh, an opportunity attack if he's pushed back. Oh, that's so good. So he pushed the orc back, and because he's going to get out of range, bam, we got an attack of opportunity. Very nice. Very, very nice. Let's go ahead and do that now then. I wonder if it could smack it. Oh, and it smacks into the other one. Oh, that's awesome. I love that. Okay, now this is teamwork. Yeah, you could say that. Uh, the Wizardess is your area of effect specialist. She is frail, but her powerful attacks can hit multiple. Sorry. Uh, okay. Yes. I think I. Okay. Moving on. Achievement unlocked. Alt F4. I actually can't. Moving on. Uh, she is frail, but her powerful attacks can hit multiple enemies simultaneously. Some of her attacks can also inflict some powerful status effects like burning or frozen. I like that a lot. There's an archer. First things first, let's take cover. I think that's a great idea. Let's do that. At level 1, the Wizardess has two spells under her belt, a Cure Minor Wound and the formidable War Wazaz Whirlwind. 
Spells cost astral energy and also have a cooldown period. You'll get some astral energy back at the beginning of every turn. You can check the regen value by moving the cursor over the astral energy bar. So, uh, Cure Minor Wounds. Basic range spell that lightly heals the target. Also heals the slash tendon status. Becomes more powerful by raising intelligence. Perfect. This has a 56. I wonder if that means that it heals for 56 damage. Points of damage. Uh, Wazaz Whirlwind. 14 to 17 damage. Uh, creates a wind vortex dealing area of effect damage. All right, let's do that because that's what it wants us to do. Oh, that is amazing. That's a big, big a AoE actually. Uh, Wazaz Whirlwind is an area of effect spell, which means it can also hurt your friends. Be careful where you cast it. Aim for the highlighted tiles so it can hit multiple orcs simultaneously. Bam, let's do it. Uh, the Thief's level 1 skill is the Sneaky Strike. This attack can dish out a lot of damage, but only if your target is facing away from you. Also known as Backstab. Since there are no orcs in range facing away from you, delay your turn and let them act first. Maybe you'll find an opening after their turns. Maybe. The elf is exposed. She's a frail character. Position her behind cover with the wizardess so you can protect her from the archer who's about to act. Let's do that. The elf skill is the elven ricochet. It's a highly sophisticated technique which will randomly hit up to two targets in a two tile radius around the last target. Uh, let's see. A surprising shot that deals damage and can ricochet up to two times. Each ricochet can hit anyone, friend, or foe. No, friend of foe. I'm hoping that is intentional because that would be quite nasty. Uh, within the two tiles radius around the last target. Yeah. See, that is not intentional. It is not the friend of the foe. It is friend or foe. So that I believe might be a typo. Oh no, and that is, wait, that is so much damage too. Look how much damage it will do to our ranger. Also, are elves supposed to not care about friends? Based on that, it is an elven technique after all, it makes me wonder. Well, clearly it wants us to do this, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. It also seems like 80% means that there's a 20% chance he'll hit a friendly target. So I'm hoping this will be fine. <laughs> Nicely done. Oh no, he's going to backstab or... <gasps> no! Okay. So I just want to point it out that there are only two orcs alive. They hit twice and our ogre is already at half HP. This is going to be brutal. We have to be very careful as we play through this one today. Uh, well, today and tomorrow and the day after. Finally, an, arc is, an orc is vulnerable to your sneaky strike. Let's sneak up to him. And sneaky strike on the fool. A powerful, vicious attack that only works if the target is facing away. And that is going to kill him outright. Damn. Coming, did you? Now, finish this combat as you see fit. Um, so we can do a ranged attack or a melee attack. It doesn't take time to change. So what I think we could do... Let's see, we're all going to go first before he goes. So I think we can just go here and just hit him with a bow. I think. Let's try that. Oh, wait, we're facing the wrong way. All right, hopefully this will hit. There you go. Um, here you go. A great victory. Don't forget to take your loot and to heal your characters before the next fight. Um, yes, yeah, so I think this time... 
When you heal everyone, takes two potions. Heals injuries. I mean, he definitely needs a heal. I don't think the ranger does, so we'll just use a potion on the ogre. There we go. Yeah, I don't think we need to use one on the ranger. All right, we got seven gold coins and chair caner. Sorry, I actually don't know how to pronounce that. Let me know. Armbands. Uh, these armbands have been reinforced, keeping your arms safe of rogue splinters. One protection and one physical impact. We'll go ahead and take that. Wow, what a fight! Still, those orcs weren't in fighting shape. I think they were running from something. If that's the case, so should we. Enough defeatism. Let's go. We still have to find the dwarf and the barbarian. Very true. Um, let's see. Can we go and equip the armbands? Yes. Let's go ahead and equip that on him. Look at that. He actually does have uh, armbands now. Awesome. That's awesome. I like that the gear actually shows up on characters. There's there's plenty of games out there where the gear that you get actually doesn't update the model. Um, and, you know, that tends to ruin immersion. So the fact that that does happen in here, yet another thumbs up. All right. Uh, if you heard that, that was my phone. Apologies. Okay. Sorry about that. Uh, I think we're... Yeah, we're good. We're good, we're good, we're good. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm thinking... Um, my goal is to have these episodes run around 45 minutes to an hour. Um, and we're pretty much hitting that spot. With that said, uh, I would like to at least finish the tutorial. So I think uh, we're going to make this first episode a little longer. We're going to go ahead and uh, grab the barbarian and the dwarf. And then we will uh, call it. And, um, and then I'll release another one. I don't know when. I haven't really created a schedule for these yet. All right. So let's go ahead and go through the door and find the barbarian and the dwarf and wrap up our tutorial. Come on, have a taste of my act, you orc scum. There's one dwarf yet in this dungeon who still draws breath. <laughs> yes, we'll kick your face in. You're lucky we're here. You're in over your head. Nothing's over my head. I'm tall for a dwarf. <laughs> okay. Um... The dwarf and the barbarian are in a tough spot. You have to help them before they get overwhelmed. You can still access your inventory during the planning phase to equip items, pick consumables, or to heal. This can be useful to analyze the situation and devise a strategy. Begin combat when you're ready. All right, so let's take a look here and see what we're dealing with. Um, so there's a lot of cockroaches and ants, and it's just disgusting so let's just stay zoomed out for this one um hmm let's see so the barbarian has three orcs around him it looks like he has a starving orc an orc berserker and an orc warrior this orc warrior seems to be much stronger he has three protection uh, so that's a strong orc. The Berserker is likely to be the one that will dish out the most damage. Now, who is this guy here? So, see, it looks like the Ranger is going to go, then the Barbarian, and then this orc. I don't know who this orc is. Aha, it's the Berserker. Okay. I don't know if we can kill the Berserker outright, but that would be great. But I don't think we can do it. Right, then we have the dwarf. We got an orc warrior, an orc berserker. The orc berserker is already at half HP though. And then we have an orc archer. I'm thinking how we're going to do this. Now, I don't think we want the ogre here. Can I take... I want to move him. I, I wanted to move the ogre over here and put the archer, since the, the two of them are in cover, 
as the others will have to move. But I think I can't move him. I can move him, but I these two seem to be tight in there. So I'm going to send the archer this way. Since we're going to go and try to help him, uh, we're going to send the archer forward. She's probably just going to get into cover and shoot. And now the thief, we're going to try and get behind these or maybe go towards the archer. So let's click on the thief and let's put him all the way here facing that way. All right, and let's get to it. Now that the ranger is equipped with a secondary weapon, he has a new tactical option. He can perform ranged attacks. Play your turn as you see fit. All right, so the very first thing I think we're going to do is we could get into cover from that side, maybe the archer. Um, and we also want the ranger to take the hit over... Since the ranger does have two protection, while our wizardess only has, well, has zero. So we're going to go ahead and move him forward here. Face forward. And we're going to use... Uh, actually, wait, can, I, can we use this and an attack? I'm not sure. But I do want to give the fence, so let's give everybody the fence. Oh, they used the last uh, point. Okay, that should be fine. Uh, the Barbarian is a powerful, nimble fighter. He can move a little further than his companions, and he hits hard. However, his protection is rather low, and his precision is not that good. Damn, I'm just thinking of the party we have doesn't really have a... Uh... Well, I guess the tank and the ogre, sorry, the dwarf and the ogre are likely to be our tanky characters. I'm just trying to think of like what our front line is, right? All right, anyway, let's move forward. Uh, the good thing with the Barbarian is that he's rather straightforward. His first skill, Steel Barrage, targets all three tiles in front of him. Select Steel Barrage and let's check out what happens if you attack those orcs. Uh, let's see. A Greatsword Swing that hits every character in front of the Barbarian. Okay. It looks like the 60% is quite... Oh, I, li I like how he can... It's not, it doesn't have to be horizontal or vertical. It can actually be literally just three tiles around them. All right, well, let's go ahead and use it. Nice. Another one bites the dust. Leaving this spot is still too dangerous for now as you would get hit by two opportunity attacks. You don't have much choice there. You should end your turn. I just noticed that the Berserker gained 10% damage for being, I think, on low HP. He's on the third threshold now. So that's that's pretty dangerous. Uh -oh. Oof. Your enemies have skills too. Those orcs can knock you down, although there's a chance to resist this thanks to your physical resistance. A knockdown character will skip their turn and is easier to hit. Damn it. Still healthy though. Um, our dwarf is a noble descendant of Gurdil Shiny Ass and as such was predestined to an adventurer's life. He has enough hit points to endure the charge of a rabbit troll, but is rather slow. He loves heavy armor, shields, and gold coins. My type of dwarf. My type of dwarf. Uh, the dwarf is in trouble. Weakened and surrounded, he may very well die before the next turn if you leave him like this. Time to talk about defensive stance. It's a skill that all of your characters know. Select it in your action bar and use it on the dwarf. Oh, let's check that out. Eight protect. Very important. Uh, makes you immune to crits, harder to hit, and greatly raises your protection until next turn. That's perfect. That's exactly what we want from him right now. Uh, the defensive stance raises your character's protection and lowers the precision of any enemy attacking you until next turn. It will also protect them from critical hits. However, a character who is in defensive stance cannot perform an any opportunity attacks. Defensive stance can be cancelled if the character gets stunned, knocked over, or scared. Select it, then use it on the dwarf to protect him from incoming attacks. Alright, so very important things to remember. If we get stunned, knocked down, or scared, then defensive stance gets cancelled, and we also don't get opportunity I attacks. I guess I'll grab a book. Jeez, okay. Message taken. The shortest path to your companions is blocked by crates. Thankfully, some elements of the environment can be destroyed, like fragile-looking crates. Usually it takes two hits to break them, but the ogre is so brutal, he can destroy them in one. 
plus he cannot miss this attack. Attack this crate and open up the path to your companions. Let's do it. Uh, let's go ahead and smash through this crate. To hell with that crate. Um, now let's think about this. So we are going to send our wizard Des and our ranger towards these two. So I think we can send the rest onto this way. Or maybe... Mm. So these are what I'm thinking. The dwarf is in defensive stance. So it might be okay to just send these two. Or maybe we'll do it on standby. We'll do it like this. That way we can kind of head in both directions. Oh no. Um... You just got hit by a critical hit, and the Barbarian is now unconscious. He's not fully out of action yet, but you have a limited number of turns to rescue him with a healing spell or a potion. Beware, a character who's fallen unconscious in battle will suffer from an injury. Okay, that means that she needs to heal. Uh, the Wizardess has a spell of Cure Minor Wounds. It's not a very powerful spell, but it can be used at range. Can we heal him? An unconscious character can be healed with potions or healing spells, but will suffer from an injury after standing up. If a character has not been healed before the unconscious stage ends, they will be out of action until the end of combat. Oof. And what's the stage? I guess that's the number three, so when it counts down to zero, it's the end of the stage, probably. Alright, well, let's get him back on his feet. There you go, buddy. Nice. All right, looks like she has... Could I use the... Okay, let me see if I can understand why. All oh, right, because we have one action point to move and one action point to use ability. So we can use both action points to attack, of course. Uh, let's go ahead and move... Here, because the archer is over there. So let's go ahead and move... And hide there. Okay. Oh, no. uh, these enemies can immobilize you with a crippling strike. An immobilized character cannot st can can still act normally, but cannot move anymore. They're also easier to hit. That makes sense. All right. Next up, we have the rogue. Now, I'm thinking of using him to rush forward because we're not going to be able to attack anyway. Um. Now that means we might get attacked with an with an arrow, but I think I'm willing to take that. Although this orc hasn't attacked, this orc is going to attack next turn, and he can move here. Yeah, so if we move here, we're gonna get attacked. So let's move here and pass our turn. That way, he should not be able to catch up to us. Perfect. Now, uh, we're probably going to use Elven Ricochet, but let's go ahead and get into cover. There we go. It's both yellow, so that's probably a good thing. So let's get into cover here. And let's use uh, Elven Ricochet. It looks like the odds are in our favor. We might even hit all three of them. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, don't let me down, Elf. Perfect. I don't think it hit that one. Okay, seven damage. It's gonna move forward, all right? Uh, all right, now we're in a position to help him. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna move closer and we're gonna use our, can we kill him maybe? I don't know. He is flanked. Oh, come on, Ranger. Why don't you do this to me? Uh, can you... What's the chance? 65%? I think we might have to take that chance. Yep. All right, come on. Don't let me down. Take that worm. Nice. That was a lot of damage, too. 25 damage. Um, now, you're going to stay here because you're going to take an attack of opportunity if we move. So, just end turn. What do you have? Deals damage and knocks over your target. Um, I think we can just attack, really. It's a 78% chance. What's the percentage on this? 73. 
Yeah, let's go ahead and just get rid of this guy. Yeah, I'm confident. That is not good. Comfortable with that with that decision. And now we'll go ahead and stay here, because if we move, we will take an attack of opportunity. In fact, we can't, because we're mobilized. Forgot about that. Uh, now, our orc friend is unfortunately unable to attack. I really believe that these two should be able to deal with that problem. Uh, I don't really know what to do with the ogre. I think we might go... Well, our rogue actually... You know what? Let's send him here. Face that. And I think we're out of range for this, so let's just go ahead and go into the fences stance here. Yeah. <laughs> 16 damage. Um, this is not that this is worth it. Um, Yeah, we want to focus on that guy, so we'll probably hit him with a magical attack. Although she is protected currently from from that archer. If we go here, she can probably take a blow. We're going to take that risk, though. Alright, let's go ahead and use a magic attack on this guy. Done. All right, what he's gonna—he's gonna attack our dwarf. In your dreams. <laughs> well done, good parry. Okay, now we could sprint towards the archer, or we could go and backstab this guy. But I think I like the idea of sprinting towards him more. Yeah, I think this is a better idea. Um, now we're gonna go ahead and shoot this guy in the back yes he will get flanking we could hit him too well, let's just take a take out of this work go oh. oh come on <laughs> you missed the attack of opportunity oh my exactly what is oh okay I was worried about that actually. I, I knew that that could be an, uh, um, could happen. All right, let's go ahead. We're gonna melee him this time around. Uh, for wait, is this not active anymore? Should be active, right? Wasn't it until the end of combat? I guess the cooldown is over. It should still be active. All right, he's flanked. Partial parry. No. Maybe you can take care of him now. That's seventy percent because you're getting supported. <laughs> My leadership is leading us to victory. Right. Sh sure. Sure thing, Ranger. Sure thing. Uh, let's go ahead and just move one. I I keep forgetting to to establish the location or like the way they move. Uh, let's go ahead and face him straight up. Try to get him to shoot at us. An achievement. Uh, where's that freaking dwarf? Get the dwarf behind cover. Um, I'm thinking of actually covering the... Oh, the, the ogre has 41 HP. thought he was lower for some reason. Um, let's just keep him under cover, honestly. We pretty much only have that one guy left. And just in case, we will pop the tech. Uh, if we go here, do we get a shot? It's all red. We're probably going to take that shot, though. How does that impact us? Um, only a 45% chance because of cover. Yeah. And it's only, it's a, it's only a 70% chance of attacking it as well. Um, I just read that little dialogue. I don't know if you guys saw that. This orc must feel quite lonely and probably would have rather stayed with his orcish family this morning. Probably would have been a good idea. We're going to go ahead and attack him anyway. Hope for the 40%. Perfect. That was 19 damage too. All right. We're going to go for a backstab on him now. And hopefully that will be the end of him. 
Oh. Uh, your enemies are fleeing. They will try to run to the yellow area that just appeared. If they make it, you will earn less experience. In some battles, there won't be a retreat area, and they'll be and they'll try to fight to their last breath. Stop them before they reach the retreat area. Oh no! I don't want them to retreat. I want my experience. And it. Oh no! Okay, this seems to be better. Oh no! No 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 no! No! Damn it! I sp Yeah, that's my fault. I'll take it. I'll take that one. I for some reason thought we were still in range, but we were sprinting already. That that's totally my fault there. Oh well. At least we survived. And that's what matters. Um, I will take the five gold. We got Immunator, Universal Antidote, an easy dungeon potion. Theoretically negates most poisons. Remember, you can't negate a poison after suffering a frothy death. That makes sense. We got Boots of Strategic Retreat, seem to be boots for our thief. It gives him one movement and five max stamina. Sometimes the only difference between cowardice and prudence is the thickness of a supple leather sole. Leaving without a sound is better than dying in a gurgle. I'll give him that. Uh, we got a dodgy pot for our ogre. Uh, this rusty pot is covered by a thick, goopy layer of congealed fat. It can protect you from goblins and cook them afterwards. Look at that. Perfect. Give them two physical res. I'll take it. And two potions, which is also very nice. I don't think we need to heal. I think we are going to move on like this it might, might be a bit risky but we do have the wizard desk that can pop a heal on the barbarian if he takes a big hit so look out it's a weirdo old dude with staff a wizard it looks more like a broom uh hello hey pay no attention to me in fact you shouldn't even be able to see me it's just my invisibility ring acting up again is a wizard looks more like a janitor. That's very reductive. I'm the head cleaning operative of this dungeon's mortuary maintenance, Janos Hitor. I deal with the corpses left behind by adventurers. The smell would get unbearable without me. <laughs> He's just gonna eat his work if you don't mind. I don't. As long as the floor stays clean and it means less work for me. Ew, I'm gonna be sick. We're looking for a way to the next floor. Usually, people like to take the stairs. Yes, but there are some magic locks. Really? Didn't notice them. I <laughs> must be immune thanks to a spell of mine which enables me to go wherever blood has been spilt. We could make him take it to the dungeon, master. Yes, take us with you. Nuh-uh. No time for such threats. Got work to do. A wizard. That was a wizard. He realized he should withdraw with haste. Who's this haste guy? So, I may have just noticed that our Barbarian is not very smart. Any consumable you find can be equipped on your character's belts from your inventory. Move forward in the dark hallways of the Dungeon of Nahulbuk. Alright, so let's go ahead and equip our gear very quickly. Uh, we're going to equip no, stay the... out of my pockets. Don't worry, I was actually just going to give you a pair of boots. There you go. You've got some padding there on your boots now, buddy. And we are going to give our ogre a dodgy pot. Lovely. That's just... Yeah, that's... Why not? Actually, why not? That's that's all I have to say there. Uh, you know what? Let's go What's ahead and there? give our barbarian... Oh, bad. Uh, oh, yeah, wait. He can't eat broccoli. Because, you know, he's a barbarian. Mm, let's go ahead and... Wait. Can I not give him the ham to eat? Can I put the ham? No. Okay. But he has ham. 
If it stinks, it's my boots. It's my precious gold. Okay. Alrighty. Um, well, let's go ahead and wrap up by just reading our new character's dialogue, or gear. So let's see. So we got armbands of moderate brutality. If you can't beat them, hit harder, you coward. Barbarian saying. The letter of these armbands has been tanned in the blood of vanquished enemies. Show-offs love them. We got a savage harness. Uh, barbarians spend most of their, li their life half-naked. They have a utilitarian outlook on fashion. And his blade is called a Twisted Veil, technically a claymore. Well, you could use it as a paddle, I guess. Nice. Oh, he has boots too. Old leather boots. When it rains, feet get wet. Barbarian saying. The feet odor is starting to get interesting. That is a disgusting, Barbarian. No way I'm giving it away. Yes, you like gold and... Oh my god, that's adorable. Okay, let's take a look at what he has. So he has rusty dwarven armor. This armor can probably take some slashes from goblin swords before it crumbles to dust. But there's no way to know exactly how many. Don't forget your rust scraper and bandages. We got a dwarven warrior helmet. A simple, reliable helmet, typical of mountain dwarves. Other races mostly use them as ashtrays or as flower pots. I guess that makes sense. Uh, your first lame-ass axe. Found for free in any baby back bitch dungeon starter. I really shouldn't be asking questions anymore. Um, Liwej is rotting pavise. Uh, looks like there's a halfling who's missing the door to his burrow. That is adorable. I like it. I'll take it. Right, so I think that concludes the first episode. Uh, that was a pretty lengthy one. Um, wait, hello? All right, well, we can't, I can't make a new save, but did it save? Time played, 1 hour and 15 minutes. I mean, that sounds like it, but can I save? Is Does it just save automatically, maybe? Because I know we can't have another save. Everything is surrounded here. I think we're okay. Um, all right, so again, that's where I'm going to call it. Uh, thank you so much for watching, as always. I will see you on the next one.